Hello, um, nice to meet you. And in this session, uh, I'm going to introduce our new project called the Central Dogma. So then, let's get started. Um, as this session's title says, um, Central Dogma is a repository for storing service configurations reliably. Um, when you build an application, uh, you want your application to be configurable, like retrieving some settings from a configuration file or a centralized repository like database, Redis, Zookeeper, whatever. Um, so Central Dogma is our new project specialized for this specific purpose. So what exactly is Central Dogma? Um, it's basically a repository service for storing textual configuration. It's designed to store JSON files primarily, but uh, it can store any text formats like YAML, XML, INI, and even JavaScript. And if an application retrieves its configurations from Central Dogma, uh, it means the application may not function properly uh, when Central Dogma is not available. So we made it highly available to address this issue. Also, um, any configuration change can affect an application's behavior dramatically, like causing regressions or catastrophic failures, even if you did not change any lines of your code. Um, so be because of that, um, Central Dogma is version controlled so that we know who made what changes, when exactly, and uh, bad change can be reverted easily. On top of these basic features, um, Central Dogma also provides some ad advanced mechanisms like querying and change notification and uh, mirroring from an external Git repository like GitHub and GitLab. Uh, we'll revisit these each um, bullet point in next slides for more details. In the previous slide, um, I said Central Dogma is designed to store any textual configuration, uh, but when should you store your configuration into Central Dogma? It's actually pretty much suitable for every case, as you can imagine. You can store everything in there. Um, the simplest use case would be um, to retrieve the configuration uh, when an application starts up. You could fetch some settings which do not change until the application is restarted, in this case. Um, more advanced case would be dynamic settings. Some settings are dynamic, so you have to change them at runtime without restarting your application. Your application needs to watch the repository and apply the new settings as needed. This sort of settings include user or IP blacklist. For example, if you found some sort of abuser and you want to block his IP address, in this case, you don't want to restart your service just because of that. You want it to be applied uh, in runtime automatically. Also, scheduled maintenance notice. Um, it's also useful when you want to uh, tell your users that your service is under maintenance without restarting your service. And also, if you are doing some A-B testing or uh, slow roll out of a certain feature, uh, you may want to adjust the percentage parameter of that testing parameter. Uh, in this case, you also do not want to restart your services, but you want to adjust the parameters uh, slowly and dynamically. Also, um, sometimes uh, your business logic may change a lot more frequently than usual. 
in such a case, uh, you could even store your business logic in central dogma, like in JavaScript, as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, now, um, high availability. Let me explain how central dogma ensures high availability. Um, it employs multi-master architecture so that a client can write to any of the available replicas. That is, it's not a master-slave architecture, which is more, uh, so multi-master multi architecture is more robust when a certain replica goes down. Uh, therefore, it's possible to update the settings of your application even when all replicas but one are down. Um, the clients will automatically connect to an available replica. However, um, as you know, um, no distributed storage is perfect, and we made some trade-off, trade-off of course. Um, in Central Dogma, uh, a Central Dogma cluster is eventually consistent, uh, which means uh, it may take some time for a change uh, in one replica to be propagated to another. So if you, for example, if you make one uh, change in a replica A and then immediately trying to get that change from replica B, then you may not find it. You will have to wait a little bit or you just have to query the replica A where you pushed your change directly. Also, um, because we have to make sure uh, the configuration changes are, changes occur in an orderly manner, we hold some locks, global locks for writes. As a result, writes are much slower than reads. Uh, but in reality, this shouldn't be a real problem uh, because we don't expect application settings change very often. Obviously, um, implementing all these um, distributed mechanisms like consensus algorithms uh, is a difficult job, so we did not reinvent the wheel, and we just rely on Apache Zookeeper for coordination and replication. So someone may ask, uh, why don't you just store everything in Zookeeper? Because Zookeeper provides a way to store key values um, but as you may know already, um, Zookeeper has a limited capacity because it keeps everything in memory. Um, so we can keep the whole history of the repository. Also, we need the advanced mechanisms like uh, querying and notification mechanisms. Uh, I'm gonna introduce about it soon in this session. And version controlled. Um, Central Dogma um, uses Git as its backend storage, uh, which is very different from other competitors so like ETCD or Console or Zookeeper. Um, more specifically, um, we use JGit from Eclipse Foundation, which is a pure Java Git implementation. And by using JGit, um, we can keep the whole history of configuration changes, like who made what changes when exactly, um, because we keep our history in a disk, uh, which is much bigger than RAM, uh, we have more freedom on storing the whole history. However, um, even if it's based on Git, uh, we do not expose the full functionality of Git. Uh, we only expose some of them uh, because uh, it's too powerful. <laughs> so rather, it looks more like a subversion repository to the clients. For simplicity, uh, 
we use integer revision numbers instead of SHA-1 commit IDs. And we do not support branches because in production, configuration changes are linear. Uh, we find integer revision numbers are also easier for SREs to understand and also easier to figure out which changes in your under pressure, you know, uh, when something bad happens, um, you know, there's always some sort of pressure going on to the administrators, and they need to figure out which change is newer and which change is older quickly. And SHA-1 commit IDs are not that good at in that situation. And Advanced query mechanism, as your service gets bigger and bigger and more and more complicated, um, the number of settings you need to manage increases as well, which means the configuration files are gonna be, gonna get larger and larger, like sometimes it could be as large as one megabyte at worst case. Um, so you need to manage it somehow. Uh, and also, as a result, some application, uh, applications of your service may not be interested in all those configuration properties, but only uh, interested in only just a few of them. And in that case, you really don't have to fetch uh, one megabyte of JSON file whenever you want to get the, get the configuration. So you need some sort of query mechanism. And if you store your settings in JSON, um, Central Dogma provides more advanced query mechanisms than plain text files. For instance, um, you can use JSON path to select a specific part of a JSON file very easily. Now let's see some examples. Um, the first expression says uh, to select the author of all books. And the second expression says select all the books whose price is less than $10. And the second one, uh, third one does some sort of regular expression matching, which is more advanced than the first two examples. And you can also do more advanced queries if you do some research on JSON path later. Um, and also, um, you can apply changes to your settings or retrieve the changes in JSON patch format. Here, it's an RFC. Um, so it's similar to usual diff, but it's more uh, advanced in that it has some sort of semantic uh, information, like uh, some JSON node was removed and some JSON node was added and some JSON node was replaced with some new value. So it's more rich in terms of semantics information it carries uh, than usual text file diff format. So using this format, we have more uh, picture on how configurations are changed, which can be useful in some cases. And in, in the beginning of this talk, I mentioned that uh, there should be a way to get notified when a change is pushed to uh, a repository so that some settings are applied without restarting servers, and this is a uh, change notification. So if you store your settings in Central Dogma, uh, you can get notified when your settings change and then retrieve its content very easily. So in this, let's take a look at this example. Um, first, uh, we get the client using new client method here, and we specify the URL of the server. Uh, in this case, it's example.com. 
And here, this is protocol. We currently support HTTP. Uh, it's actually HTTP 2 and 1. So if uh, in most cases you're going to speak in HTTP 2 protocol, which is way more efficient than HTTP 1. And also we use Drift here, T binary. Um, so we create a client here. And then here's a revision number. Uh, we specify revision number because we have to know, we have to tell Central Dogma, uh, please give me the file whose revision is greater than this. So uh, the first commit in a repository is one, which means uh, the moment when a repository has been created initially uh, and the repository is empty. So since the beginning of the history, uh, you ask for, ask, ask Central Dogma what change was uh, added since the beginning of the history. So, hmm. but uh, we could have used a different revision number here, uh, like uh, three or four, if we knew uh, there is a file at revision number three and we know its content. Then uh, if it's in your, uh, nobody pushed any changes since the revision number three, then we don't have to uh, ask for any changes. So watch file will wait until somebody pushes a new comment like revision number four. But otherwise, um, it will wait until a new comment is added. But in this example, we keep things simple. So uh, instead of caching anything, we just start from revision number one. And then we start because revision number one is the beginning of his story. Uh, we are sure somebody added settings.json at some point. So watch file uh, will tell immediately that some changes were made after the revision number one. So in here, app.join will not block and will return immediately with the latest known revision of the settings.json file and its value is also fetched. And then it's an infinite loop, so it goes back. And then let's say the revision number of settings.json was four, and then it will, less known revision will become three. And then watch file will block indefinitely until uh, a new commit is pushed so that uh, the revision number of settings.json becomes five or six. And then somebody pushes it, pushes changes to settings.json, then uh, this join will return eventually, and then last known revision will be updated again, and the newest content will be fetched, and then infinite loop again. So we always get notified when some changes are made to settings.json. And here's a query, and we specify JSON query, which means um, this settings.json probably uh, holds a lot more properties than just one. And we are only interested in this property called sum value. So this watch file only t notifies us uh, this value this sum value property is changed. Otherwise, it will not notify you. So if somebody pushed uh, a change to settings.json, but uh, only for uh, other value property, then this will not wake up. So you are notified only on an interesting changes. And by the way, 
you may have noticed that the whole client uh, is asynchronous, returning Java 8 completable future. So you can, although this example uses join method, which is basically uh, converts, which basically converts a completable future into a blocking operation, but you could also add a callback to the return the completable future and build some sort of finite state machine uh, to make things completely asynchronous. It's all up to you. And if you are using some asynchronous server frameworks like Armeria from Line, uh, then you would take full advantage of this asynchronous mechanism. Um, the last feature I want to introduce is Git mirroring. Um, these days, uh, when we make changes in our software, uh, we do not push our comments directly to a source code repository, as you know. Um, in, instead, uh, we send a pull request, get it reviewed by other teammates, and then merge it. Um, the idea behind this feature is to use the same process for configuration changes. And there will be much less chance of making a mistake if a configuration change is reviewed by teammates before it's applied. Uh, as I said before, uh, because we can cause regressions or catastrophic failure even if uh, we did not change any code just because of configuration changes. So it's natural to review the configuration changes. At Line, um, we use Git to central dogma mirroring. Uh, we keep our original settings in GitHub Enterprise. And then when someone wants to apply a configuration change, um, he or she sends a pull request to the Git repository. Uh, once the pull request is reviewed and merged, then Central Dogma mirrors it into its repository. Uh, why we do this is because um, usually um, corporate source code repository is not highly available. It's open, it's, it's, it's backed up, but it's not highly available. It, if it's down, you have to recover it, and we, you have to wait until it's fully recovered. So you cannot make any changes to it, and you cannot even access it. And also, it's often not in the same network with services. Uh, you know, you don't really want to store your source code with your uh, servers because if somebody breaches into your servers, then they, if they are in the same network, they can steal your source code, which is not a good idea. Um, so um, the applications use Central Dogma for reading and watching configurations, and the developers use their corporate source code repository um, to push configuration changes and to get them mirrored. Um, and on the other hand, uh, what's interesting is that we did not make this process mandatory for all repositories because in some cases, uh, pushing directly to central dogma makes more sense than using a pull request and mirroring. Um, for example, um, if we wrote a daemon or an automated tool that pushes a change into central dogma automatically, um, then getting it reviewed by a human being may not be a good idea because it's going to happen quite a lot and it's all automated, so there's not much point of reviewing it manually. Um, similarly, um, um, pushing directly into a central dogma repository doesn't make much sense if the repository is being mirrored from a Git repository um, because your changes will be uh, overwritten by the next mirroring job. 
So even if you push to some sort of change to central dogma, it will be wiped out uh, later, like after a few minutes. Um, however, um, we do not stop a user from pushing a change directly into a mirrored repository either. Um, it's because a user may really want to do so in case of emergency, uh, like when their source code repository is down, because it can always happen and it's not highly available. All right, um, we learned all the core features of Central Dogma. All this could be summarized into a single diagram in the slide. So in the center, there's a central dogma, which is made of um, various subsystems, which implement the features we, uh, we explained in this session. And also there's Zookeeper, which keeps the replication log. And then there's a human being, a developer, who sends a pull request for configuration changes, and then mirroring service merges it. And applications do not access GitHub, GitLab directly, but it uses Armeria to connect to Central Dogma via HTTP2 and access to access the Central Dogma directly. So it's simple, but it's, it fits really well with the modern software configuration management workflow. So I think you're going to like it. And uh, last but not least, as well as the client library for JVM-based languages, uh, we also provide a command line client. It's written in Go programming language, and it's designed to work well with um, traditional tools like shell scripts. Um, this means you can fetch from Central Dogma even if your application is not written in Java although it's not as optimal as Java. But uh, we have planned to implement more client libraries for various languages, although our uh, first class support is focused on Java. Um, so do you find Central Dogma interesting? Interesting? Yeah, cool. Uh, so do you want to give it a try? You want to install it and play with it? Maybe yes, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, even if you don't think it has all the features you want, but I think it's OK, and it's great. Um, and what's the current status? Um, currently at line, um, Central Dogma is already in active use, in, use at production, and we are trying to increase the number of internal customers. However, um, all product is not always perfect, and Central Dogma is, uh, is not an exception. So uh, Central Dogma is not a perfect product. It needs customer feedback and more improvements, and need, it needs also new features. The good news is it's a very interesting project, so it's never going to be boring to work with, and we are having fun with it. Um, so there are many future works to do. To list just a few, um, they are actually present in every subsystem we have implemented so far. Um, so it has an authentication layer, but it doesn't have any fine-grained uh, access control model uh, like authorization, um, so which would be very nice to have. And also our command line client needs to be more robust and it needs more work, like adding more operations and making multiple changes in a single comment because current, it currently provides uh, only a few operations that works on a single files. And also Central Dogma has its own web-based uh, administrative dashboard and it's written in AngularJS and we want to migrate it to Vue.js as well. So we can add more features on top of the framework with brighter future because Angular JS is now under maintenance mode and they have switched it to Angular 2. And we also want to add more metrics so that administrators can monitor it better and eventually want to improve the right performance of Central Dogma. Uh, so uh, by because ourselves could uh, monitor D 
these numbers and figure out what is the bottleneck. The better news is um, you can take part into this effort from today because it's an Apache licensed open source project from today. So please visit the official website, um, line.github.io slash central dogma. And also, um, it would be great uh, if you could watch the project or start it or fork the project at GitHub. Uh, also, it would be really nice uh, if you tweet about this news with your followers, which could be pretty vital. Um, then, thank you for joining this session, and please take this QR code to find more about Central Dogma, which leads to the, to the official homepage of Central Dogma. Thank you.